in today's video, we're talking exercise selection. Welcome to the video guys, my name is Tyler, also known as the Fit Chemist, and I help people take control of their lives by taking control of their fitness and nutrition habits so that ultimately we can lead healthier and happier lives. So if you're new here, welcome, please consider subscribing, turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when I post a new video, and if you are returning, welcome back, I am so glad that you are here. At this point, we've covered the essentials for a sound training program, so that's progressive overload, periodization and progression, and then deloads and fatigue management. Now it's time to get to the fun stuff and actually start putting our program together and we need to do so by selecting what exercises we are going to be doing. There are a couple questions to consider when you're selecting the exercises for your program. The first question to consider is are you a strength athlete or a powerlifter? So maybe you're competing in a strongman or you're doing powerlifting, in which case there are going to be specific movements that you're going to need to train because strength is a skill. You're going to have to do a lot of your volume using those particular movements. There's nothing wrong with using supplemental movements. So let's say for a powerlifter, you know, the main three are going to be a squat, bench, and deadlift. There's nothing wrong with doing a front squat as a supplement to your squat. Or let's say some sort of bench variation or some deadlift variation to sort of help you with those main three lifts. The next question to ask yourself is, are you a bodybuilder or some sort of physique competitor? If the answer to that is yes, then you probably want to put more emphasis on some of the weak points on your physique to sort of bring those up. The next question is, are you someone in the general population who doesn't necessarily have strength goals or physique goals? If the answer to that is yes, then you're in this lucky category because you can pretty much go into the gym and do whatever exercises you enjoy doing. If you remember back to video one, adherence is going to be the most important thing. So when you're writing your program, you wanna write a program that you're going to adhere to and you're going to enjoy doing. The next question to consider is, are there certain exercises that you can't do because of a current injury or a past injury? So let's say you messed up something in your back and you know that if you're deadlifting, it's just gonna injure again. I would say don't do that. But a word of caution here is I would say don't necessarily use that question to sort of like, you know, opt out of exercises just because you're scared of potential injury. Like if you're a newbie in the gym and you don't want to squat just because there is potential for injury, that's not a good reason unless you actually know that doing a squat is going to re-injure yourself. It's really a balancing act. You should be programming things you enjoy, but also program things that are going to be hard and don't just shy away from a challenge. Now that you've decided on what exercise you're going to be doing, I'm going to give you some practical recommendations. So if you are a strength athlete, you should be doing 50 to 75% of your volume on those specific movement patterns. So again, if you're a power lifter, you should be training the squat, bench, and deadlift for 50 to 75% of your volume. And then the remaining 50 to 25% is just going to be accessory work. If your goal is hypertrophy, then you should be doing one to two compound lifts per session. And then maybe anywhere from two to four accessory movements, depending on what your overall volume scheme looks like. When it comes to upper body, there's really going to be four categories of movement types that you want to make sure you're hitting. So one's going to be a horizontal push. So something like a bench press, then you want a vertical push so something like a shoulder press or a military press then you want a horizontal pull so something like a dumbbell row or a barbell row or a seated cable row and then you also want a vertical pull which is something like a pull up a chin up or a lat pull down so really you want to be incorporating one of those movements throughout the week the frequency of those movements are going to depend on how long you're going to be in the gym for each of your workouts and also how many times you're going to be in the gym per week if you're a beginner, I would recommend trying to hit each of those categories at least once per week. And as you move to intermediate and advanced, I say trying to hit each of those categories at least twice per week. When it comes to lower body, there are really two sort of movement categories. One is going to be a squat pattern. So any sort of squat variation or something like a leg press. And there's also gonna be a hip hinge pattern. So something like deadlifts, sumo deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, any sort of like glute ham raise, things of that nature where you're not necessarily squatting, but of course you're moving at the hips. Isolation movements are then exactly what they sound like. It's any movement in which you are isolating a specific muscle group. So something like a bicep curl or a tricep push down. It's just anything that is not a compound movement. There are a couple important notes when actually going about the programming. So exercise order does matter. Your compound lifts should come 
come first and then your isolation movements after. It doesn't make any sense to sort of like pre-fatigue yourself and then try to squat or deadlift or bench after that. You wanna put a lot of your energy towards the beginning of your workout and that's where your compound lift should come. The next point is that variety is important but too much variety can actually harm you. So I'd say if you're trying to incorporate some variety in your workouts to sort of change things up, I would say do that with your isolation movements and not the compound movements. The point I'm trying to stress here is that you should not be program hopping. It takes your body time to actually learn the neuromuscular adaptations for those movements. And then you can start progressing once you learn that movement and then you're adding weight or reps to the bar each week. If you're watching this, of course, you're interested in designing a program and not just going into the gym and doing something from week to week and doing whatever you feel like in the gym, which is great. I would say you're gonna get better results following the program. But at the same time, you also need to consider that if your program is feeling a little dull, maybe shake things up, change the isolation movements for one week, and that's not ultimately going to affect your progress that much. The big picture is now coming together. We've covered pretty much everything we need to know for writing a program, but there is one more thing that is not so important. And we're going to be talking about rest periods in the next video and also lifting tempo. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below. And again, if you are new here, be sure to subscribe turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when i post new videos because i post new videos every single friday you do not want to miss when i go live and with that i'll see you in the next video